these pictures that we're showing in the questions uh, segments are all March 15th pictures. Um, this one was three years ago. This one was um, six years ago. But just so you know, this is not an unusual year. No, our years have been pretty consistent, uh, consistently unusual year after year. <laughs> what we find when people go walking outside this time of year is we get questions about, oh, the vines look terrible. They look like unstuffed mattresses and exploded from the, <laughs> the, the uh, covering. Um, Clematis being chief among them. Yes, Clematis. We get more questions on clematis. A lot of questions on clematis. People are so concerned that they're going to lose the flower. And, and it's been, uh, okay, so clematis grows back. This is a hybrid clematis. And I've cut it back to take out the dead wood and to cut out a couple of old canes. Um, in that first picture is what I'm working on. That's three weeks, uh, nine days later in the next picture. And then a month later, it's not minding being cut back. They grow back like asparagus. The problem with cutting them back is that you've got to be out there to direct them where to go, where yes. they grab hold of everything. They'll go everywhere. They'll and buy. Um, but people have gotten confused because of all of these different kinds of clematis that there are. So I said, okay, let me show you again. This is one of the, the repeat blooming clematis. And I'm going to go down to the base and take out from the base several stems trace them up and take out the rest of them. And I'm going to shorten everything else. I'm going to cut the top half right off. Makes it look much neater. They still bloom, still do wonderfully. There are three types of clematis, the ones that bloom very early and you have to wait until after they bloom. Armandii is one of them. It's a scented one in the top, the top left side is all the early ones. Very few people in our zone can grow the early blooming ones because the buds get killed as it is by the spring frost or the winter cold. Most of you have group two big flowered the hybrids. Big flowers. And those are the ones that you want to leave some of the old stems up, shorten them to a nice fat pair of buds, but you want to leave some of the old stems up because like climbing roses, they're blooming on, on side shoots. Yep. But then the ones that are really nice, and all of them will act this way if you want, is you can cut them right down. Just cut them. Just group three. Just cut them right down to the right ground. Down. They're still going to do their thing. And, and on some of them, like the follicle medicine that we used to call it, you uh, got you to cut it. Might want to consistently cut it down. Yeah, either cut it or start running. Uh -huh. And it is very windy. Uh -huh. And that took us to a vine weevil question that we got. Um, about a rhododendron. They said, oh, something's eating my rhododendron and it looks like it's getting worse. Um, yeah, that is a, f a fair amount of feeding. And is it weevils? They said, I said, yes, it looks like weevil damage okay. to me. Weevils always start chewing on the edge and chew inward in arcs. And they, they their first bite is like this little notch right there yeah. when we were first black vine weevil in school that you that's what you look for were the notches and some of the leaves were just notch 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 notch, notch and not this far eaten in so yes it, when you get something that black vine weevil is one of the worst weevils a weevil is a type of beetle that doesn't fly and it has a certain mouth part looks a little bit like a truncated mm -hmm. elephant's trunk um and they they chew the black vine weevil is not native the strawberry root weevil is native and both of them chew the same way. The black vine weevil came into the United States in the 30s. It's not, it doesn't fly. It doesn't move around except when people dig up the soil that has its grubs. The grubs are there from August until April, May, sometime, uh, sometimes early June. Uh, if people m dig up the soil and move it around, it gets spread. Mm -hmm. At first, they stayed localized where they came in over on the East Coast, the Southeast Coast. Um, but then we had an interstate highway system built and people started shipping plants all over the place. And now they're all over the country and they really like yews and rhododendrons, but they'll eat a, a, a lot. They'll eat burning bush. They'll, they'll eat, uh, the, the, the list is well over a hundred species of plants. So it's not a good thing to have around. They're, they're right now, this time of year, that's where they are. By the 1st of April, they're about as big as a plumped up uh, grain of barley. They're whitish yellow and they're eating the roots of plants. And they've like been coral bells. Yeah, this is a coral bell. They've been eating the roots of the plants since they emerged from the eggs that were laid last August and September all winter long. If the ground is thawed, they're chewing like sheep grazing on grass. And what happens more so than the damage you see on the leaves that the adults do in the midsummer, this is the worst damage that they do. And you need to get them out of there. 
Anything oh. that damages the roots compared to the leaves is yeah. much more dangerous. Yeah. That's a black vine weevil right there, and that's a coral bell leaf, and that's what it ate in one night out of the coral bell leaf. Chomp, chomp, chomp. But that doesn't bother the plant nearly as much as trying to spend the winter without any roots. Yeah. Um, and even one weevil on a young plant can kill a plant over the winter. So the person who asked about this, um, Pam, Pam, oh, I think it was Pam, uh, asked about this, she said, well, what can I do? I need to get rid of them. The problem is you can't get rid of them this time of year very easily unless you can dig up the plant. If you dig up the plant and shake the soil off of its roots and kill all of those grubs that you mm -hmm. find or feed them to the birds, that's what I usually do is I throw them out on the pavement and they the robin is sitting in. there waiting for me. Yep. They're not going to find their way back in. Um, and or you wait until June when they emerge, when the adult one, because the whole population is underground right now. In June, sometime when they hit the right temperature, a number of days of temperature, it's usually early June, the adults emerge and begin eating. And you watch for the adults and you can go out at night and you can put a sheet underneath the plant, um, a cloth sheet, and then shake the plant. They fall out of the plant, onto the sheet, and then you do the Mexican dance on them. You know, as hard as you can possibly do it is to crunch them all because they are very crunchy. They're very hard to crunch. Um, or you can use an insecticide that is that goes into the leaves of the plant called the systemic insecticide that when the weevil eats it, it kills the weevil or prevents them from becoming, uh, from laying eggs or, or maturing. Mm -hmm. But uh, there is also, I'm sorry, I'm running off this all real quickly. There's also a nematode, that's a, uh, an, a, a microorganism, they're vaguely related to worms, um, that you can add to the soil. It's probably some of them are there, but you can add them to the soil in August when the young are hatching out of the eggs. Yeah. They get eaten by these nematodes. Um, but those are things you have to wait to do. And this time of year, we don't want to wait. Um, this goes way back to issue 102 with the weevil problems, and that's all written down there. What's up? 102. And one weevil, an inch of coral bell root, it cleaned it off in like two weeks. 